Hi, so in this video I'm going to be installing underground electric at one of our coops right here. And this should help to solve a problem we have every winter on our farm, which is the freezing weather. Where we live it can get down to about zero degrees in the winter, so all the water dishes for the animals will freeze solid and we have to pound the ice throughout the day so they can drink the water. So this winter we decided to go with small water heaters for each water dish. So I just need to install a couple outdoor plug boxes which we can use to power the heaters without running eccentric cords all over the place. So this area I'm going to be installing the electric in. It's already pretty far from our other buildings, but luckily we do have electricity already installed to this coop right here. I'm going to be direct burying some new cable from right here at the bottom of the coop all the way along to this wooden post, which is where one plug box will go. And then I'll put another plug box over there by the turkeys. Well now it's time to start digging, so I'll be switching to the time lapse for this next part. Okay, so I completed the first section of the trench going from the coop all the way over to this first post right here. It's about a foot deep all the way across. That's where the first plug box will be right there at the base of the wooden post. And next I need to go all the way along here down to the turkeys, probably through these rocks right here. So I finished digging the trench. It's been a few hours of digging. Okay, so this is what the trench looks like now. It's all dug. The birds have actually filled in this section just a little bit since I've been digging the rest, but that's what it looks like. It stops in the corner with the wooden post and then it continues this way. Then this is the part going toward the turkeys. I started digging it slightly shallow at this point because I got really tired, but it should be fine because I'm just putting direct burial wire at the bottom. So the next step is to actually run the wire and for that I'm using this direct burial cable which is good to be put directly in the ground without any conduit and I'm just going to walk it out along the length of the trench. So next I'm going to fill in the trench here and cover the wire until I get back to the second plug location. So everything is filled in and packed down now and I just left the places open where I'm going to be connecting the plugs or into the building right here where the power is. So next I'm going to put conduit over this section of wire I left sticking up in the corner here where the plug is going to go and it's going to be about two feet long so I'm going to measure two feet on here and then cut it to length and I'm going to do this twice because I have a second plug box over by the turkeys. Next, these pieces of conduit go down over the wire, and then I can bury the rest of this in the ground. Now 
Next, I need to drill a hole into the bottom of the building right about here so I can connect the fitting which attaches the outside cable to the inside cables. So next I'm going to finish this section where the wire goes into the building. So the small piece of conduit is going to go over the wire. And it's going to go through this connector right here. That goes right there and that goes there. So next I'm going to fill back in all the dirt and that's pretty much it. The wire is now going into the building. So now I've completed the most difficult part of the whole process which is the digging and the installation of the cable. Now I have it going into the building right there, and I have two spots where the conduit sticks up out of the ground ready for a plug to be attached. So next I'm going to install plugs on each of these sections where the conduit comes up. And since I'm not a licensed electrician, I'm not going to make this a tutorial video. I'm just going to show the process that I'm going to do to install the plugs. So next I'm going to install a plug on top of this wire. And for that I'm using a metal outdoor electrical box, and then a waterproof face plate, as well as a GFCI outlet and then I'm using this coupler which connects the conduit to the metal box. plug installed I got the GFCI in there with this cover on it and so we can just run the cables out through the bottom and close this and it'll stay waterproof. So next I'm going to install the second plug. All the other steps are the same except I'm just using a regular plug here not a GFCI because I only need one GFCI at the beginning of the circuit. Okay, so I got that plug finished now, it's got the cover on it. So both plugs are installed now, one right here and one over there. Okay, so now I'm just going to hook up the power inside the coop right here, and then the plug should be working. So it's been a few days since I installed the wiring in these plugs right here, and I did finish connecting the new wiring to the old wiring in that coop. It just got really dark that night, so I couldn't show the process of doing that. I'll test the plugs with this little electric pump that I have, and you can see that they're working. So tonight is supposed to be the first freeze of this coming winter and the temperature is predicted to be in the mid 20s and so now it's time to set up the heaters. So we got these small heaters which are designed to heat buckets and they're 80 watts and they just get set at the very bottom of the water dish and then I can plug the power cord in and run it through the bottom and it will stay dry even when it rains. And it's the same thing with the other water dishes. I just put the heater at the bottom and then I can plug the cord in. So now all the birds at this area have access to water that shouldn't be freezing. And I'm going to be putting more water heaters in all the other animal water dishes today, just getting them ready for the freezing tonight. I'll also be setting up my camera tonight to film the whole night of a heated water dish next to another water dish without a heater, and it should be pretty cool to see the ice formation in the non-heated water dish. So it's morning now and the temperature is 25 degrees. So I'll check on the water dishes and you can see that the one with no heater is completely iced. Well, the one with the heater has no ice at all. And this is how I filmed the time lapse. It's just the camera here filming 
the ice, and then I had this light on all night too. These are the other water dishes at this coop that are powered by the plugs I installed. And as you can see, there's no ice on here either. But I did add these metal wires on the top, which keeps the ducks from swimming in the water. And also, I put these plastic clips on the edge, which keeps the cord down so it can't be pulled out. It looks like all the other heaters did their jobs, and it's great we now have a solution to the freezing weather.